Hi everyone. So I've been told to tell you that uh, the updated scheduled is on the website. So um, this is my uh, my talk, uh, Maria de Bisto procedures and why they should be improved or actually why I think that they should be improved. I'm opinionated, uh, just like every sentient being. So uh, what I will say is my opinions. You are totally free to disagree and tell me. Anyway, um, so short agenda. Uh, I will tell you why stop procedures are important, at least to me. Um, I will give you some nice examples of uh, existing libraries and uh, I will give you a list of the improvements that I think we need to uh, write more helpful uh, procedures. So, uh, why are they useful? Well, from a user perspective, uh, stop procedures can be seen as an APA that database administrators or engineers can maintain um, so that uh, um, they can write maybe complex queries or optimized queries or, I don't know, sequences of uh, queries and transactions so that uh, developers just have to call them. Why? because, well, uh, we all know that uh, most developers just want to use ORMs and they don't want to write any SQL. And uh, it doesn't matter how wrong they are, fighting them is totally useless, they will win. And uh, <laughs> uh, let, let's not ask them to write SQL if we, if we can avoid that. Um, well, also, they can avoid some network I.O. overhead. Why? Because simply they are a sequence of queries, right? Uh, if I want to run 10 queries uh, in a stored procedure, I will call the procedure once, obviously. Uh, for the same reason, we will have shorter locks, right? Because I instead of sending a query, uh, having a log, sending another query, getting the results back and blah, blah, blah. Uh, well, I, I, I will do this in a procedure, so I will avoid uh, the overhead of the uh, network uh, communications. And also you can write them once and call them everywhere, which was an uh, old Java uh, slogan. What do I mean? Well, maybe you have uh, several applications connecting to the same databases. Maybe they even use several languages, not the same language. Maybe some applications are not even maintained. If you can use the procedures, it's much, it's much easier to um, change uh, the logic uh, used by several applications. Uh, and then I want to give you a community but also vendor perspective, I think. So basically, procedures are an easy way to add callable code into MariaDB. So even if you don't know how to add code to MariaDB itself, uh, maybe you can't write a plugin. Uh, well, you can add procedures in SQL. It's easier, and usually you can obtain an acceptable result as a minimum. Okay. Um, they are also easier to distribute and uh, install compared to a plugin or uh, user-defined functions because you don't have to compile them. You just provide them as uh, a set of SQL uh, uh, statements. Um, some MariaDB features, in my opinion, could have been implemented as stored procedures and the result could have been acceptable. I'm talking about things like uh, kill query, if exists or not exists, set statement, uh, yeah, stuff like that. 
Um, okay, so if what I said is true, why isn't this happening? I mean, why are people not using stop procedures? But there's a cultural problem that I will not mention here. Well, I will mention, but I, I will not dig into it. Uh, a lot of people think that a database server shouldn't contain logic. Uh, I disagree with that, but anyway, I will not dig into this. Um, but some of the reasons are related to MariaDB implementation. So uh, MariaDB store procedures are still a bit too slow. Um, they miss features that uh, would make development easier, especially if you want to write generalized code that can be reused in uh, several contexts. How do you define too slow? I can speak uh, uh, some reasons, but from your point of view. Yeah, I'll anticipate the next slide then. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, the next two slides. <laughs> if I just run um, uh, a loop uh, from one to one million, it takes uh, almost five seconds. But it's still half of what it takes in MySQL. So from a perspective, it's it's a great achievement, but... Uh, we have just improved that three, three, four times the last week. Sorry? We improved that one three to three, two times the last week. Oh, well, that's great to hear. <laughs> uh, I, I, I will wait to see the next version then. But the, 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 the increment. But there's lots of things that can improve. Yeah, that, I think that in general, I can say that uh, the code execution is a bit too slow. But again, uh, I, I don't know which improvements you made last week, so I will wait to see that. seconds. So what we know is that between each statement, we have a huge line of code. I mean, uh, that many lines on the screen, a big screen. Basically, just resetting things. We don't need to reset things for between the statements that just do for increment set the variable. We do that. So all this step has this reset that is huge. We kind of rem remove that for simple things, and that okay. improves the other ones. Selects are still as fast as the select, but uh, the 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 logic for handling stop procedures is no much faster. Yes. Okay. That. Um. Again, this is half of the time it takes on MySQL, so even uh, even this is much better, but still, uh, I hope that uh, the last improvements uh, make them much faster. Um, the last thing I wanted to mention is uh, there is no native debugger. This is a problem if you want to write um, complex stock procedures, right? Uh, maybe it's not a problem for trivial ones, because you can just add some selects to output some variables and uh, debug in this way, but still not ideal, even in that case. Um, so, um, I wanted to mention that actually MariaDB made some great improvements to uh, stock procedures, if, if you compare them to uh, MySQL. Uh, well, the most obvious is it has a PLSQL parser, so it can parse um, a lot of Oracle stored procedures. Uh, to be honest, I will ignore that for the rest of the talk, but I mean, it's great that we have it, but I will talk about the uh, native language uh, for the rest of the talk. So um, some cool additions are things like uh, execute, immediate, begin, not atomic. Sometimes they look trivial, but they aren't. For example, execute immediate can be very useful when you have a um, procedure that calls itself recursively. You have recursion. So um, because if you use uh, the long version, so prepare, prepare statement name, um, execute the allocate basically what happens if is if you call uh, if you do this in a procedure and the procedure calls itself you try to redefine um, 
a prepared statement that already exists, right? Because a prepared statement exists in the session, uh, not just in the procedure. Okay, I've shown this. Um, I think that uh, there have been very interesting um, examples of uh, stored procedures libraries, actually. Most of them are not maintained anymore, unfortunately, probably for the reasons I mentioned. But I still believe in this kind of things. Um, in, in case you don't know them, well, Common Schema was a great framework um, developed by Nock uh, Shlomi, sorry, Shlomi Nock. Um, it even included a sort of internal language, uh, and it could do a lot of interesting things. Um, well, the second one is very old, actually. Uh, not many people remember it, probably. It was written centuries ago by Giuseppe Maxia. Um, the intent was to add some missing features to uh, stored procedures, but I'm not sure it works nowadays. Um, the third one, unfortunately, um, was maintained for a short time, I think, uh, but it was very useful, uh, especially in the past, because uh, when MariaDB and MySQL didn't support roles, uh, you could have, uh, you could simulate roles with uh, secure each. Um, probably it still has some useful function, even if roles are implemented natively, for example, it can clone a user or do some other things. Um, FlexUse was written by um, Justin Sonart and basically, well, it's not just a stored procedure um, library, it also includes some other components, uh, for example, to read the binary log, but it is a great example of library that simulates um, um, a feature because basically it implements um, materialized views. Um, MyTab, uh, UT MySQL, and SDK Unit were all um, um, unit test uh, libraries. Before someone accuses me, I have to admit that the last one was made by me, but don't use it because the code was horrible. <laughs> and the last one is actually the funny thing that you see uh, in the image. Um, I wrote it just to have fun and to show that, uh, yes, you can use uh, stock procedures to write ASCII games. <laughs> this is the handman. Um, so, Talking about missing features, I think that uh, the main one is external languages, right? Because, uh, okay, SQL is great for queries because it, uh, it describes what you want to have. And basically, it, it's English, right? Everyone understands it. Um, and then to write uh, store procedures, uh, procedural uh, constructs were uh, added. But to be honest, it resembles uh, archaic languages like COBOL, and uh, it's not a good cool language to use, to be honest. Uh, so uh, I want to look uh, sometimes, occasionally, at uh, PostgreSQL to see what they do, because I think they, um, they are great in this area, in stored procedures. Um, PostgreSQL supports natively SQL and C, and also it supports um, other languages that can be implemented, and uh, a lot of languages were implemented by the community, actually. You can find the list at this uh, URL in the wiki. Um, it includes both interpreted and compiled languages. The list includes Python, JavaScript, PHP, whatever. Now, um, 
if I can make a suggestion about uh, implementing external languages, well, Python is a lingua franca, right? Uh, every mm, data engineer knows it. Every mm, analyst probably, any DevOps. Okay, so it, it's a good, generally it's a great choice. Um, but at the same time, I think it has uh, problems, right? Because uh, uh, normally when you install um, a Python script, uh, you want to do it into a virtual environment, right? So um, in that environment, uh, some modules exist, but this doesn't affect the other scripts. Uh, I don't think it's possible to do it uh, in a database, probably, so I would also <laughs> recommend that uh, Python is not the only available choice we have. So, um, okay. yeah, sure. So, um, uh, a little bit more than 10 years ago, Anthony Curtis and I wrote uh, pluggable external language stored procedures. Um, and we were basically done with it. We had it working for Perl and for Java, two very different languages. Uh, the reason it didn't end up in the server uh, was that uh, there really wasn't enough interest in it. Uh, there, there, wasn't, there wasn't enough demand for it uh, for it to get priority for review and similar. So uh, has, do you feel like that Part of the landscape has changed. Is there is is there more demand now uh, for this than there was at that time? Well, uh, I can't speak for other people, of course, but I think it would be useful. And I think if I think about people I know, I don't know customers or other people I know, there are people who could write uh, stored procedures in PHP or I don't know. Python, Perl, or something else. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. Sorry? Sorry for stepping in. Maybe it wasn't is the area of interest because it basically allows you to run a, not a containerized, but semi containerized software that doesn't affect the host system. So you are safe from running anything in WASP. I was talking about something this shortly because it might be a good idea because people are, uh, would be allowed to enable to write just anything they want and to run it on a post without any kind of security which means it's a good idea. Yeah, and um, now that I think uh, more about it, probably one difference is nowadays there are many more, you know, data engineers and many of them could find it useful, maybe, for example, to interact with external mm. APIs. Uh, that is a use case that didn't exist 10 years ago, probably. Okay, so continuing with uh, my list of uh, missing features, uh, let's go to procedures, input and output. The input part is, I think that if we want to write reusable stored procedures uh, and distribute them as open source, it would be nice to have more flexible ways to use them. So we probably need optional arguments, variadic arguments, so a variable list of uh, uh, arguments, um, overloading, uh, okay, that is optional, but PostgreSQL has it, and I think um, it, it's very interesting. Um, anyway, uh, a bit more about it later. Um, and then the last one is actually a PostgreSQL uh, uh, syntax that just makes code uh, easier. You have to make less checks at the beginning of your procedures, basically, right? Uh, so, Oh, and talking about the output, there is only one thing I ask, which is, please give us table functions. Okay, um, I will return on all these things. Um, so for some of the things I mentioned, there are uh, um, Jira tasks, requests by users, basically. Um, so about optional arguments, well, I think it's simple as this, right? Uh, 
adding a default clause uh, after an argument specification. Um, Variodic arguments, well, here I used, uh, if it's correct, I used the C syntax, but it, it doesn't matter. I mean, it's, it's not a matter of syntax. We can use any other syntax. The idea is uh, uh, to have uh, any number of uh, um, arguments of the same type. Of course, to access them, we would need two additional functions or variable, I don't know, whatever, uh, which are the classic uh, argc and argv. Okay. Um, talking about overloading, as I mentioned, Postgres has it. And uh, basically in Postgres, procedures in the same database and in the same schema can have the same name as long as they accept or return different types. Okay. Um, so yeah, I made a very simple example here. For example, we could have a get month days. Uh, function which can accept an integer or a part car. Actually, in, in the example, I also included a default value. Okay. Again, I, I think it's useful if you want to write things that can be used by several people, and you don't even know those people. Everyone has different habits. It, it can be helpful. Um, the last thing yeah, about uh, input-output is uh, um, table functions, because I, I think they are kind of implemented in MariaDB, but not for stored functions, just for uh, built-in functions, because now we have this uh, JSON table function, right, which returns a result set. So my hope is that this means that infrastructure has been added to provide this feature. Uh, if we could return a result set from a store procedure, uh, this would be very flexible from, from my perspective. Um, as I added in the last line, well, ideally, it would be great if table becomes even a first class types, meaning that you can use it for uh, variables or whatever. I'm not asking weird things like add, adding a table inside another <laughs> table. I'm not asking something like that, just for variables and parameters and return values. Um, oh, uh, oh, actually, the last thing is this. Um, as I said, this is a Postgres SQL syntax. Uh, you can specify returns on null input, which means uh, if any of the parameters are null, uh, just don't run the procedure at all. So it's also an optimization and just return null. Uh, most built-in functions probably do the same. Hold on null input is, is just a verbose way to do the opposite. Okay. Um, I also suggest some optimizations. For example, in inline functions. Um, actually, between parentheses, I, I can tell you that. Uh, Yes, Postgres has them, but they are quite disappointing because it, it only supports very simple cases. This could be a, 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 an area that where maybe you could easily um, do better. <laughs> um, basically, the idea is when a function is simple, uh, you could uh, and it is called inside a query, uh, the original query could be modified uh, to, to include the function. Okay, in this example, we have a very simple expression, right? Uh, and a select that uses this. this. It would probably use an index, and I think it would be an optimization. 
The other thing is a syntax that you actually have, but uh, uh, I think it has no effect um, nowadays, except for giving us uh, an error if the variable trust uh, trust uh, store procedures authors something like that. Uh, if it is not set to one, we will get uh, warnings or errors. But um, Basically, um, I think it should be used as an optimization because if a, if, if a function is uh, deterministic and it doesn't uh, write uh, data to tables, the results can be cached. Okay, So uh, if, if I call it twice with the same parameters, probably it shouldn't run again. Um, PostgreSQL also has um, as a kind of um, semi-deterministic mode, which is stable, which means the function is deterministic inside the same query. Okay, so if it's called several times in the same in the same query with the same parameters, it will return the same value. If it's called by two different queries. Uh, it might return different values, even if the parameters are the same. Um, well, basically, in built-in uh, functions, something like that exists, I think. Because you can have now, which uh, returns always the same result in the same query, but C-state can return different results, even in the same query. Yes? The server, the results are not cached, but it affects Oh, query cache treats the function to deterministic Okay. Okay, that, that's... So if it's deterministic, then optimizer knows that for saying uh, values, it will all return the same result. Okay. Then it also can be query cached. And it's not deterministic. Um, but if I understand correctly, it works in the same query, right? Yes, it's all for the same. Okay. So optimize it, optimize the query. Okay. The function is deterministic. Then... Well, I think it would be interesting if if there was a sort of global cache. So, yeah. uh, because uh, suppose that m many different connections call the same yeah. function, and often they use the same parameters. And if they do not use same parameters, it will be just slow down. Well, this is uh, yes. Yes, yeah, so probably in, the in that case, a workaround for the user could be just not to declare it as the term. Um. So another interesting thing that Postgres supports is create operator. But uh, I'm not suggesting to support this syntax. I just want to look into what it is. Okay, Because an operator in Postgres is a function that you define um, and uh, some hints that uh, you give to the optimizer. And actually, you could do the same. Uh, for any function, in my opinion. So, uh, for example, uh, Postgres allows you to uh, give hints about function execution cost. Um, a communicator function, a negator function, and a restriction function. So, a uh, commutator function is just as in the example, uh, greater than or less than are obviously commutator because you can just uh, switch them and change the order of the um, operands. Uh, a negator, well, it is obvious. A restriction function is probably a bit more interesting because it's a C function in Postgres. It's a C function that uh, uh, estimates the selectivity of uh, a function. Um, an interesting thing is that actually you don't really have to write it. 
because there are some generic uh, functions that can be used in several cases. Okay, for example, Excel or Nextcell, uh, they estimate the um, they estimate the uh, selectivity of equal or not equal. But in practice, uh, they are often used for different functions. They won't be accurate, but they don't need to be. So, um, yep. No, just be real. So uh, this is a feature that was discussed, but did you actually? No, I, 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 I can't do with that. <laughs> I can tell you for sure that can be. No, this is this is for so this is talk about sort function. Sort regime regime can specify uh, sort function can specify another function which is negation of the first function. I can see that it's uh, theoretically useful. I'm just wondering if it was. Well, um, but as I said, uh, the interesting part is um, if you look at this. Two examples, right? Excel and Netcell, they already exist. You don't need to write them. When you have, when you write a stored function that will have probably similar selectivity to equal, you can just specify Excel as, well, uh, I mean, it, it won't be precise as I said, but probably it won't matter a lot. Um, Postgres also has some others, not just Excel and Excel. Um, it, it, it also has uh, functions for uh, greater than and so on. Uh, probably the, the most simple cases are enough. So last part is about types. And I think there are a couple of things here, which are arrays and polymorphic types. So arrays, well, of course I know that you can have JSON arrays, but the problem is if you want to use JSON arrays as arrays in a stored procedure and then loop over them and do all the things you would do with an array, probably you would end up writing, uh, I mean, verbose code, okay? Um, that's the main problem. Um, they don't help you to write uh, more understandable or easier to maintain code. Um, and also, of course, proper arrays would be faster, at least this is what I expect. So it could be nice if you, if you could add uh, um, arrays. Uh, I, I'm not asking to be able to add arrays to tables, but that would be useful for different reasons. Yep. Just wondering if I Well, yes, they they support them, but I, I'm not asking that, honestly. I, I never I used such a trick in a database. Uh, in in Postgres? No, uh, I'm I'm asking whether you can use No, no, not really. I mean, simple arrays would be enough, honestly. Very very close. I mean, you can basically use those as as arrays. Sorry, the row. You have a row type. Yes, um, I think it's only in the. The PLSQL uh, version, right? Using the road type would be useful. That would be useful, it might be. 
Uh, yeah, last thing is uh, um, polymorphic types or generic types, actually. Um, I mean, um, in post, not only Postgres, but probably all uh, major DPMSs have uh, the any type, uh, at least in uh, procedures and functions. Sometimes it's useful because, you know, when you write a generic function, maybe it could work with different types, and you don't want to just convert everything to strings because if you do it you know, different, uh, sometimes it's acceptable, but sometimes it's not. Okay, so I, this was the last thing, the last uh, request. So that's all.